I just have a few questions on this, and that is, you know, we just passed the so-called cap and invest in the budget. Uh, is this duplicative of the same thing? Why, why are we doing this at the same time you have already approved the cap and invest program? Well, I think they are two different programs, but who would like to answer the questions on this bill? Yes. Oh, hello. Happy to talk about it, Senator. Stand up. Thank you. Um, so the cap and invest program, you know, applies broadly to um, large emitters of greenhouse gases. This is specific to the transportation industry and is an incentive to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it's in some ways could be argued complementary to the cap and invest program. Uh, how much is this expected to raise the cost of a gallon of gas? So, Senator, I'm not aware of any particular studies, but when this was uh, implemented in California, they found that um, there was sort of very minimal, maybe a few cents oh God. increase in it. <laughs> You've right. never been to California, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's about a dollar a gallon more than uh, Nevada. All right, I'll just make some comments, I guess, rather than questions. Thank you uh, uh, for that. The, uh, the background I have on this is that uh, this type of program uh, raised the cost of a gallon of gas in California by at least 20 cents a gallon. New Mexico and Minnesota did a similar uh, a standard and it was going to increase the cost of gas up to 45 cents a gallon. Um, the the energy czars that we have in New York right now, Basil Sagos and Doreen Harris, recently penned an op-ed on April 3rd. Uh, they appeared on Capitol tonight with Susan Arbetter and said that the, the cap and invest program and the CLCPA uh, goals that we have is going to increase the gallon of gas by about 62 cents a gallon and increase home heating fuels by up to 80%. Uh, in New York State. Um, New York State is a leader in clean energy and we should continue to be a leader in clean energy and I am extremely supportive of that and we've made great strides. Great strides to the extent that New York State consumes less energy per capita than all but two other states. New York State's per capita energy consumption for the transportation sector is the lowest in the nation. In 2000, and these are figures from the U.S. Energy Information Agency. In 2020, New York's per capita energy-related uh, carbon dioxide emissions related to energy production were lower than any other state in 2020. Now in 2021, because of the foresight uh, of this legislature uh, and the governor at the time, Indian Point was closed and carbon emissions in New York State have jumped up somewhere in the range of 30 percent since 2021. And I think that action alone of Indian Point is emblematic of all the climate policies that we're pursuing at this point through CLCPA. They're not known. They're not fully understood what the impact is going to be, other than very expensive to consumers across the board. The CLCPA, the Climate Action Plan, the Cap and Invest, this clean fuel standard is going to raise cost, cost of goods across the board to all New Yorkers. Not just energy costs, delivery costs, you name it, building costs with the electrification of buildings. Are you on this the bill? I am. This, what does that have to do with building costs? It's, it has to do with the whole climate plan. Oh, but that's on the bill. State. This bill is specifically no, it's, it's on it's transportation. Yeah, but I'm just saying how it's the, the misguided approaches of this legislature that is going to raise the cost of living in New York State and the affordability crisis that we already have. And everybody acknowledges that we have an affordability crisis in New York. Yet we continue to pursue policies like this that are going to do nothing but increase costs to everyday New Yorkers while dealing with our 0.4 percent total global emissions from this state that if we get to zero, we're going to have zero impact on the climate changes that we're trying to deal with with this thing. These policy initiatives that we have go too far without being fully understood. They're going to be too expensive for New Yorkers. And they should be more well thought out, more well studied than they have been. 
Basil Sagos and Dorian Sagos on the same April 3rd op-ed said there was no cost benefit analysis to the CLCPA. It's unconscionable to me that we're pursuing these policies with going to have this great cost and impact on the affordability to everyday New Yorkers. I urge a no vote on this.